Hello, Prob and Stats. Today we're going to be talking about two things, the coefficient of variation and also the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. So today, to start off, um, yesterday we spoke about variance and standard deviation of a sample, and we talked about how items with a small standard deviation tended to be all piled up on top of the average, the mean, and items with a large standard deviation tended to be more spread out. The smaller the standard deviation, the more like the mean the data was. So what happens if your mean is not the same? Or in other words, what happens if you have data from different populations that may use different measurements of units? So like one is measured in inches and one is measured as feet. Um, or what if you have data that's completely different, not even relatable? Um, one standard deviation is in dollars and one standard deviation is in inches. How are you supposed to compare those two pieces of data when you can't compare the standard deviations because they weren't measured even closely? close to being on the same units. In that case, what we do is we use something called the coefficient of variation. Now, for samples and populations, it's pretty much the exact same thing. You take your standard deviation, whether or not that's little less for a sample or this lowercase sigma here, and you divide by the mean of your either sample x bar or mean of your population mu, and then you multiply by 100. That 100 turns it into a percentage. What this does is this allows us to compare data where the units don't match. So for example, Mrs. Leahy and Mr. Johnson decide to compare the heights of the students in their classes. Mrs. Leahy's class had a mean, oh, this looks like stuff I want to write down, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, Leahy, here we go. Uh, Mrs. Leahy's class had a mean height of 67 inches. All right, so my X bar, my mean, 67 inches. And a standard deviation, okay, S, is 2.13 inches. Mr. Johnson's class, okay, so I'm going to write that over here, had an average height of 165 centimeters and a standard deviation of 5 centimeters. Use the coefficient of variation to compare the two classes. All right, so what we want to do is decide, well, obviously, as you just look at the standard deviation, the 2.13 is smaller than 5, but because they're not in the same units, it doesn't work quite the same. So let's go ahead and do these coefficient of variation. So in my calculator, I'm going to take the standard deviation divided by the average, the mean, and multiply by 100. Or in this case, I'm going to take the standard deviation, 2.13, and divide by the average 67 and multiply by 100. When I put that in my calculator, I end up with 3.179104, etc., etc., an irrational number that goes on for a very long time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and round that to two decimal places and get 3.18. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing for Mr. Johnson's class here. So the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation, 5, divided by the mean, 165, times 100. And if I put that in my calculator, I end up with 3.03030303, or in other words, 3.03 repeating. So to two decimal places, that would be 3.03. So what we see here is that even though the standard deviation of my class, Mrs. Leahy's class, um, was smaller than the standard deviation of Mr. Johnson's class, the coefficient of variation was larger. So when you have standard deviation in different units, the coefficient of variation allows you to look at standard deviation as a percentage of the average. This one was a percentage of 3.18, and this one was a percentage of 3.03. So what we can do is we can say that the Leahy class was more variable or more varied. Mr. Johnson's class was more like the mean. Okay. 
So the bigger your coefficient of variation, the more varied your data is. And the smaller your coefficient of variation, the less varied your data is. And this helps us when our standard deviation can't be compared because they have different units or because they're from different data sets. Now if you turn to the next page, we have another example. And it's about the height and weight of the members of a basketball team. So the heights of the members of the basketball team are given. These people look all very tall. And the weights are given as well. Um, we are given that the mean height of the basketball players is 72.8 inches with a standard deviation of 3.3 inches. The mean weight is 187.8 pounds with a standard deviation of 17.7 .7 pounds. Now I went ahead and calculated that for us today so we didn't have to spend the amount of time going through and finding that information. So use the coefficient of variation to compare the results. I can't compare my standard deviations to decide who's more varied right now because they're not even in units that could be transferred into each other. You know, inches and centimeters, I could probably have figured that out um, with just comparing them and, and changing those units to where they matched approximately. But inches and pounds, those don't compare at all. So which set of data is more varied? So I'm going to take for height. And I know that my coefficient of variation is my standard deviation, which is 3.3 divided by my mean, which is 72.8. And since this is a percentage, we want to multiply by 100. If I put that in my calculator, I end up with 4.532967. And we could round that to 4.53. Okay, we could check the weight coefficient of variation. We know that that would be the standard deviation, 17.7, .7, divided by the mean, 187.8, times 100. If I put that in my calculator, 17.7 .7 divided by 187.8 times 100, I end up with 9.42492, etc. Um, so I could round that to approximately 9.42. So if I want to know, what are the players more alike? Are they more alike in height? Or are they more alike in weight? They're definitely more alike in height. There are more players closer to the average height than there are players close to the average weight. Um, you could say that the players vary more by weight than by height. So we can actually compare standard deviation as a percentage to help us compare data that otherwise couldn't be compared. So just like a smaller standard deviation and a larger standard deviation, in order to actually say that, you've got to have the same units on it. It's got to be inches and inches or pounds and pounds. Um, you can't compare them if they aren't the same units. The only way to compare them is to compare them as a percentage of their mean. The other thing we're going to talk about today, last thing, is standard deviation for grouped classes. Now we talked about grouped classes before when we talked about mean in section 2.3. So I have formulas for a frequency distribution. So here I have the speed of cars, 30 through 39, 40 through 49. I've got the number of cars there. And we talked about in a frequency distribution, these are, you know, that's F our frequency. If I wanted to find the mean or the average, I have to take every x times its frequency and divide by the number of numbers. Um, in this case, if I add these up, 3 plus 17 plus 50 plus 19 plus 11, okay, those add up to 100, which is very convenient. Okay, um, In order to find the mean, I'm going to have to take every x times its number. And the x's aren't there. The x, remember, you may recall, is the midpoint of the class. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little column down here. So here's x. I'm going to take 30 plus 39 divided by 2. And I end up with 34.5. And 40 plus 49 divided by 2. 
44.5. And if we continued this down, the mean, sorry, the midpoint of the next class would be 54.5, and then 64.5, and 74.5. Those are my x's. We want to multiply those x's by the frequencies, and I'm just going to copy those down so they're in their same place. 3, 17, 50, 19, and 11. And according to our mean formula, I need to multiply every x times its f, and then divide by the number of numbers. Again, we get that by adding up those frequencies. That's 100. So x times f. Now, if you want to do this entire thing in your calculator, you can. You would type in 34.5 times 3 plus 44.5 times 17 plus, et cetera, all the way down. Um, and you should get the same sum. I'm going to go ahead and do this in pieces. So I'm going to take x times f, 34.5 times 3, and I end up with 103.5. 44.5 times 17 is 756.5. 54.5 times 50 is 272, no, I said that wrong, 2,725. Much different. Decimal points are important. 64.5 times 19 is 1225.5, 1,225.5. And 74.5 times 11 gives me 819.5. If I put those all together, the sum of x times f is 5,630. So now I'm ready to find my average. My average, x bar, is the sum of x times f. I see that in my formula. That's 5, 6, 3, 0, divided by the number of numbers, which is 100 giving me an average of 56.30. And I'm just going to go ahead and write it down as 56.3. Okay. So there's my mean. Now the standard deviation of class data is a little bit more mean. We have to do the same thing that we have to do with regular standard deviation. I need to take each value and subtract it from the mean. I'm going to be taking each of these x's, 34.5, and subtracting the mean of the frequency distribution, 56.3. So you can see the difficulty here is not that um, I have to find the mean in order to do this, but that it's a little bit more complicated because it's class data, and then we have a weight here. The other thing I'm going to see in the formula is that I have to multiply each of these differences, x minus x bar quantity squared, times the frequency of that class. In the denominator, I need to divide by n minus 1. So I'm looking for this value right here. Now, if it was me, I would take my calculator and do the majority of this. So in other words, we're looking for x minus x bar quantity squared times f. So you could do each piece individually. Let me bring up my calculator here. Okay. And if you'll hold on just a second, I know you are all very patient in watching my exciting video. All right. Here we go. So if I take my calculator, I could type in, let me clear this out, um, for each one of these, so 34.5, that's my x, minus the x bar, 56 Point three. I'm going to close the parenthesis. I'm going to raise it to the second power, and then I'm going to multiply it by the frequency of that class. The frequency of that class is 3. And if you wanted to, you could just do that and write that down. That would be 1,425.72. And you could continue and do that for every single one of these. So the next one would be 44.5 minus the mean, minus 56.3, close the parenthesis, raise it to the second power, multiply by the frequency of that class, 17, and you could write that one down, 2,367.08. You could continue down the entire line and do that for every x minus x bar quantity squared times f, and then find that sum. Normally when I do this in my calculator, I want to do it all in one big step.
So I'm going to say 34, oops, 34.5 minus 56.3, close the parenthesis, squared times 3, and then go ahead and say plus and type in the next one. 44.5 minus 56.3, close the parenthesis, squared times the frequency of that class 17. Plus, I'm going to do the next one, 54.5. Oh, I see I have a mistake in my calculation up here, so I'm going to go back really quick. Okay, so 54.5 minus 56.3, that average. I'm going to close the parenthesis, raise it to the second power, times 50. It's just the frequency of that class. And then I'm just continuing on. I take each value, each midpoint of a class. I subtract the average of the frequency distribution. I square that quantity, and I'm multiplying times my value, my uh, frequency, how many there are. I've got one more. So minus 56.3 squared times the frequency, which is 11. And I get this total, 8,876. Now that is the exact same thing you would get if you added down that column, you would get the exact same thing. My flash drive is not happy with me. All right, so here we go. So what we're trying to do, and if you want to write this down, is in your calculator, or you could do this separately, one step at a time, you're going to be typing in the number 34.5. Okay, my video stopped, so let's try this again. So in your calculator, you're going to be typing in 34.5 minus 56.3. You're going to square that. You're going to multiply by the frequency, which is 3, plus 44.5 minus the mean 56.3 squared times the frequency 17 plus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to do that all the way down the line until you get that grand total. That grand total is going to give you 8,876. So to find the sample standard deviation, I look at my formula. It says S is the sum of x minus x bar squared times f. That's this big, huge, tedious thing that we calculated here, 8876, divided by n minus 1. n minus 1, n was 100, so n minus 1 would be 99. Then we take the square root of that value. In my calculator, I end up with an 89.65 repeating under that radical. And if I round that, I get 9.47 as my standard deviation. And that's it. So the problem is a little bit different from the finding the standard deviation of regular data. Because in regular data, it's much easier to find the mean. You just have to add them up and divide by the number of numbers. That doesn't work here because it's class data and it's weighted. So you have to find that mean first. Um, the other thing is that after you do the x minus x bar squared, you're not done because you have to multiply by the frequency of each of those things before you add them together. I would do your best to try to do as much of this in your calculator as you can. Now on the chapter 2 test, there will be a problem like this for extra credit, and there will be a problem um, on your homework tonight like this as well.